Welcome to 1966. <laughs> Phil's microphone. I'm not aware. There it is. Yeah, I, I, I'll try to talk a little more clearly tonight. My my voice has returned somewhat. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the ongoing 50th anniversary of the Grateful Dead at Terrapin Crossroads. It's a jubilee! All right, so in 1966, here are some things that happened. Uh, in January, The Sounds of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel hit number one. The television show Batman premiered on TV. Bang, pow, biff! The Dow Jones hit an all-time high of 995. <laughs> it's at 18,000 now. <laughs> Uh, the Buffalo Springfield formed in 1966. John Lennon said the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Uh, Gemini 8 launched with Neil Armstrong, and it was aborted after six and a half orbits. Uh, the Beatles posed with their mutilated dolls and butcher meat for the cover of the Yesterday and Today album. It was pulled from record stores. Willie Mays hit his 512th home run. The Rolling Stones released Paint It Black. The Beach Boys released Pet Sounds. The, Be the Beatles released Paperback Writer. Stokely Carmichael launched the Black Power Movement. The Beatles' reign was the first to use reverse tape loops. Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones hit number one. Janis Joplin played her first gig in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, construction crews began tearing up Market Street to build BART. Uh, Brian Jones played his final performance with the Rolling Stones. Dylan got in his motorcycle accident near Woodstock. The Beatles released Revolver. The Beatles did their last public concert at Candlestick in San Francisco. Uh, Donovan hit number one with Sunshine Superman. That Girl with Marlo Thomas premiered on TV. The Monkees television show premiered on NBC. Here's a big one. October 6, 1966, LSD was declared illegal in the state of California. Uh, Jimi Hendrix formed the Jimi Hendrix Experience, and the Beatles began the recording sessions for Sgt. Pepper. So the Grateful Dead in 1966, um, they started out coming right out of the gate. I think they did some Fillmore shows. And early early February, they decided on their own they wanted to move to Los Angeles. And I think they spent February, March, and April in LA with Owsley as their patron. And uh, Phil's gonna talk a little bit about what went down in LA, which was some acid tests and Owsley and well, so but on. Before, so, before that, uh, we, the, the, the big event of the first part of 66 was the Trips Festival, which is, is the event which really kind of brought it all together for the Haight Ashbury, uh, it was it, everybody knew that there was something going on, but they didn't know how many. Of, we didn't know how many of us there were. And when the Trips, Trips Festival happened, we discovered that there was five thousand of us all in one room. And we were all, you know, on the same trip, shall we say? And uh, it was. I think uh, I know it was a revelation for me to to see the numbers, just the sheer volume. Hipsters, you know. I don't, I don't know when we started calling them hippies. I, we never called them hippies anyway. It's just our people, you know. Do you think that that was where you first sort of felt the group mind thing that you talk about? Absolutely, and it was the, it was the extension of it. That we'd always thought of the band as being a group mind. We thought of ourselves as fingers on a hand, and uh, working together to grasp things and make make things and so on. And. Uh, and, but th th that was the first time we really experienced the, the uh, intensity of the exchange between the audience, the, the audience and the band. I mean, in a situation like that, the, 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 the uh, proscenium line or the boundary lines are very, are very blurred, at least in your mind, as you're experiencing it. So uh, at that point, it was like it became, it became not just a bunch of people, it, it, all, it became kind of like a movement, you know, and it was, it was, and it, it was not a political movement in any sense of the, of, of the word. It was, I don't know, it was a, it was a spiritual movement or a, or, or an 
aesthetic, artistic movement. But it, that that was that was where that that was where it all came together, at least for me and, to, and some of the other guys in the band. And uh, so, but but the, I mean, once you've done something like that, it's like, but now what? You know, once once we've discovered what are we what are we going to do with this? So we decided to leave town and <laughs> go down to L.A. with Kesey and the, and the Pranksters and do some more acid tests down there. What, what, did, what did you say when you were, well, first of all, is it safe safe to say that the group mind still exists 50 years later? Oh, yeah, it is. It's the spirit of, that's the spirit of the Haight-Ashbury that, has, that has, has stayed together all this time. And uh, I like to think that one of the, one of the main things that we, the Grateful Dead accomplished in their, in their time together was to keep that, that spark, that flame, you know, safe. So wherever we played, we always used to say, every place we play is church in, in a certain sense. And so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we that's we were hope what we were hoping because it uh, it uh, it just uh, didn't have a chance in the wider culture. You know? So on your way out of town to L.A., you were driving by the Fillmore, yeah. and that's where <laughs> on your way and down. And we discover that Bill Graham is now presenting at the Fillmore the sights and sounds of the Trips Festival featuring the Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> Who hadn't played in the Trips Festival. But no matter, they were a great band. And they, they Bill, really Bill saw a good idea and he ran with it. <laughs> he, he, knew, he, knew how to, he knew how to do it. Oh yeah. So you got to LA. So we got to LA and we, uh, we did the, the Watts acid test, or the, actually the Compton acid test in the, what was it, the youth uh, the, the youth uh, enhancement, uh, you know, some kind of, some kind of. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it blew, but, it but blew but minds, the, whatever it the, was. The, the, the name is the name is what what is cool about it. The reality was it was a totally trashed out building with with bars on the windows and bad so, neighborhood. Yeah, really yeah. bad. And so we did the Watts acid test there, and there's there's a thousand stories from that that they're all in my book. So, um, so, so, uh, yeah. Searching for the sound, available at fine bookstores everywhere. Um, and on demand. So February, March, April was in L.A. Owsley was the patron saint. Um, I believe he was only allowing you guys to eat meat out of well, the refrigerator. He had all the money, and that's all he would buy. Um, he, he wasn't going to buy rabbit food for the likes of us. So in the spring of 66, they decided they had a lot of FOMO even though FOMO didn't exist back then. And they came back up to the Bay Area and they moved to Novato and they went to Rancho Olampali. Yeah, which is now a historical site. It was, a, it was the site of a Miwok village uh, in the 19th, 18th, 19th century, maybe before that even. And they, they used to have, they used to have powwows there and uh, they, they would, there was an old tree trunk where they would roast their, uh, their uh, the deer and everything that they would they would eat, and it was a really kind of powerful um, location. Uh, we, uh, a couple of times, we uh, we got uh, all sparkly and crazy and everything. And uh, there's stories, there's stories about the, uh, the, pe the the people who lived there during the Battle of the Bear Flag, the, the, uh, the when uh, when the United States effectively took over California from the Mexicans, and uh, and uh, there was uh, there was apparently a, a, a Miwok chief who had, who had been uh, I think he uh, I think he was being paid by the Mexicans to uh, to spy on the, the, the Americans or whatever, and uh, but he 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 was got he get, was given a lot of gold and he buried it someplace on the property, and uh, and the, but the legend goes that he was he was so deeply into the gold that when his when he uh, when he died. His spirit was sucked into the gold, and so at one point, I'm just wandering around, and and, and in the in the in the uh, sheetrock covering the adobe walls, there's this little window, just so you can look in and see that there's oh gosh, there's adobe behind here, and so I for, just on a whim I open this little window thing and I reach in and I touch the adobe, and boom. There's the council of elders in my head saying, "What you doing in here, white boy?" <laughs> it was deeply strange, deeply strange. 
And so I, I, I kind of figured, well, maybe they're all in the gold with this guy. You know? so maybe the gold's right here. But, you know, nothing ever came of that, but it was a fat trip. Right on. And uh, so during that period, there were shows. You guys were playing in the city a bunch, the Avalon, the Fillmore. I think you went on the road a little bit up to the Pacific Northwest. Um, you, were, you were playing shows. You were developing songs. Um, you started playing a song called Me and My Uncle, which is the most played Grateful Dead song ever, uh, written by John Phillips from the Mamas and Papas, but made as a first hit by Judy Collins. No way. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, we saw Dino Valenti do it. That's where we picked it up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, they were writing a few songs, but they were still playing a lot of cover songs. Um, they had one big blowout uh, in the summer, I believe. That was the, a big party at uh, uh, Old Two. Bullet. We two. had two okay. big blowouts. A couple of big blowouts there. Um, but then in the fall of 66, um, when they started working, I guess they were already working with Rock and Danny, and Danny Rifkin was managing a house with a lot of rooms in the Haight-Ashbury, yeah. so, 710 yeah. Ashbury. Well, we had to leave Old Poly because we only had a six-month lease, and uh, there was uh, there was some some other some organization. I think it was, uh, it was it had to do with handicapped kids were coming in there. So. I wonder what they saw on the walls after you guys left. Um, all right, so you get to so you get to seven ten Ashbury, and it's and it's the fall of 1966, which really really truly was probably the peak of the hate Ashbury. It was probably just before, like 67, which was, you know, the summer of love, quote unquote, and the human being, you know, became a, a big media story nationally. It was in Life Magazine and Look Magazine and, and the news crews. And the, ABC the, News. The, right, the CBS documentary that um, was Harry done. Harry Reasoner. The, right, yeah. Harry Reasoner, exactly, which is a great documentary if you've ever seen. I think it's on YouTube. Um, and so, but, you know, late 66, the, the hate was really completely this incredible, pure place and you could walk out the front door of 710 and walk down the street and you guys were playing in the panhandle and you guys were just doing all this yeah, incredible we stuff. We were all, we, everybody was friends. Everybody was friends. It didn't matter who you are, whether you had Hell's Angel or a, or a, or a maintenance man for the Muni or what, who, if, if, if you were living in the hate at that point, you know, we were all together. It was, it's kind of, it's kind of impossible to really describe it. Hopefully, hopefully. And uh, 710 was a real social scene all the time. Yeah, I moved out really quick. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if anybody's read my book, I, I've, I've described Garcia's snore. <laughs> but we were roommates at 710. And it, and it just got better and better. So after about three months of no sleep, I, uh, I think me and Billy moved out and got a, got a place up on Diamond Heights. And, and was Owsley still paying, paying the way all the way through no, 60s? By no, the time we, you got to we 710? Were, we were earning our own way because we were working at the Fillmore and at the Avalon and everywhere we could. And 1966 ended at the Fillmore with the Grateful Dead, the Jefferson Air, Airplane, and Quicksilver, and um, that legendary Wes Wilson poster. Yeah, yeah. And um, on that note, I think we should hear some music from 1966. All right. Have fun, everybody. Happy New Year.
We would like to welcome you to yet another night of confusion and high frequency. What was it again? Stimulation. High frequency stimulation. And okay. secrets. And cold beer on tap. <laughs> and lurid, 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 lurid emotional vistas. And nightclub atmosphere. <laughs>